Did you know that NVIDIA AT series cards have increased by nearly 90% in the last 10 years? And there's two things that make that figure so much worse. Number one, we did account for inflation. And number two, the majority of that was this generation alone. So what if you don't have that kind of money to spend, or you just refuse to hand over first car kind of cash for a graphics card, but you want something that's going to give you the best performance for your dollar? Well, today we're looking at the best budget GPUs on the market right now, because even though there's a lot of high-end options being released recently, the best value for your money and the place that most people shop is this market segment. The type of budget where a critical evaluation of performance per dollar is the most important. And we're going to be doing this for every graphics card that you might consider so that you can get the most performance for your money. So best budget GPUs of 2023? Let me explain. So I have a question. Are you an avid PC enthusiast stuck with that ugly ass Windows watermark ruining your gaming and streaming experience? Well, I have great news for you. WhoKeys is a software licensing website dedicated to getting you affordable keys. And the best part is you can get rid of that watermark in a matter of minutes. All you need to do is head down to the video description, click the sponsor link and enjoy an additional 25% off using my coupon code TL20. With PayPal checkout and quick key delivery, all you need to do is hit the Windows key, type activate and paste your key right here to become fully activated. It really is that simple and that cheap. So head down to the video description if that sounds right for you. And thank you Hookies for sponsoring this video. So the first question that we need to answer is what do we mean by budget? And that's a really good question. So let's break it down and figure it out together because budget in this context is a relative term based on the options that you have. So what we need to do is get a list of every single GPU that you can buy right now. Yep, that is just over 30 options to choose from. I don't think there's ever been a time where there's been more options than this. So consider then three different market segments. We have budget, mid-range and high-end, which makes the fairest way that we can quantify budget is to split up all GPUs by price and use the lowest third, the cheapest options, which self-defines budget as up to $330. We will evaluate everything up to that price point. And the thing that solidifies this price target for me is that even if we went $60 lower, we would not be able to compare any Nvidia GPUs, which would be a real shame. So from the cards that we have identified, let's take a look at this in a couple different ways so that you can best understand understand which card is right for you. We are primarily comparing currently sold new GPUs, but as I likely have the largest data set for pricing for every current and previous generation graphics card on the used market, we will also take a look at that too, for those of you that are interested. So before we evaluate all of these graphics cards in terms of price to performance at 1080p and 1440p, providing the answer for which ones are going to give you the most frames for your money. Let's start with current pricing compared to MSRP to find out which cards are the most discounted. So let me draw your attention to this graph. So what we have here is every GPU that can be afforded within our price range ranked from highest to lowest on the left-hand side, comparing its MSRP to the average lowest new prices for February. Now, what I mean by that is I've been tracking the prices of GPUs every single day to get the lowest price GPU for every single model. And one of the benefits of doing that is I have realistic prices for all of these GPU models. And the reason why it's an average of the lowest price is so that we don't get into a situation where one day I find one that's dramatically cheaper or something like a pricing error which may muddy the data and produce an unrealistic result, which is why we have averaged the entire month of February. But what this data breaks down to is six graphics cards from AMD, three from Intel, and two from Nvidia. You may notice that the RX 6400 and ARC A380 are missing. That's because we have comprehensive pricing and performance data for all of these GPUs, but we don't for those two specific models, nor would I probably recommend or consider them a good value. Speaking of, compared to MSRP, the RTX 3050 is currently around $29 over its January 2022 launch MSRP. Intel Arc, on the other hand, has seen some pretty good price reductions, with the most notable being the A750 at $40 less, and AMD across the board. Almost everything is over $100 less than its launch price price, which is quite impressive given how everything else stacks up. In fact, let's take a look at this another way, as a percentage of MSRP. And what this shows is for Nvidia, the RTX 3060 8GB, still within our $330 budget, is the best 
value compared to MSRP in terms of Nvidia, but it's 100% of MSRP, but it's still better than the 111.5% roughly for the RTX 3050, which is the worst price compared to MSRP out of everything that we're looking at. The best price compared to MSRP is the RX 6650 XT, coming in at $256, which is 63.94% of its MSRP. And the least discounted option for AMD is the RX 6500 XT, at 75% of its MSRP or 25% off. And for Intel Arc, the A750 at 86.21% off its MSRP, which is only about 4.5% less than the A770 8GB, but still is better. And for those of you that are interested, what if we opened up to the used market, which will be shown as the gray bars throughout this video. And they represent the average of the cheapest 5% sold on eBay over the last month. Every single sale, every single listing. These are essentially the used market equivalent of the average lowest new prices, but with this data included. We now have three more Nvidia GPUs, the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte, the original RTX 3060 Ti, and the RTX 3070, which were otherwise out of our price range. For context, the RTX 3070 right there, the average lowest new price was about $482 compared to $300 used. But at $300, that makes it 59.98% of MSRP on the used market and makes it the best value Nvidia card compared to MSRP. And the worst value card compared to MSRP on the used market is the RTX 3050 at 74.79% of MSRP buying used. For AMD, the most discounted compared to MSRP is the RX 6500 XT. And the worst option for AMD on the used market looks to be the RX 6700. But Intel Arc shows something a little bit weird. The Arc A770 8GB. We can afford that one new, but we cannot afford it used, which is very weird. But given that A770s have come down in price on the new market, and the used market has really not seen that many of them compared to AMD and Nvidia cards, sometimes a pricing situation like this can occur. And it's a good reminder to people shopping on the used market to double check new pricing. If they are not that much more expensive than used or in some situations cheaper than used, it may be worth considering that new card given warranty situations, stuff like that. But as we've discussed previously on the channel, price is only a single component of value and value cannot be determined by price alone. So how do these GPUs stack up in terms of 1080p and 1440p gaming performance? Let's take a look at that now. Now let's talk performance. So we figured out how much things cost, what the price is compared to MSRP. But as I mentioned before, price is only one component of value. So what we need to do is have a look at the performance to figure out what the value of each of these graphics cards is. So let's take a look at this. This is a cost per frame calculation for the 1440p resolution. And cost per frame is one of the quickest and easiest ways to quantify value. And what I'm going to do is talk you through this graph so that you understand it a little bit better. As before, we have all of the GPUs on the left hand side with their average lowest price whether being new or used new are all colored bars and used are all gray then the first bar for all of these models represents the average frame rate for 1440p using the ryzen 5800 x3d which is also another thing to bear in mind because if you have a weaker cpu than this you may want to adjust the numbers appropriately speaking of average frame rates the first bar right here what we're looking at is an aggregate of about 100 different games, including ones that are AMD and Nvidia optimized, as well as ones using say DX9, DX12, and a mix of everything in between. So it's also worth bearing in mind that something like the Intel Arc GPUs, they tend to struggle a bit more with DX9 titles. There have been improvements recently, but especially with Arc, there's a lot more fluctuation in performance depending on the title that you're playing. But being an average of so many games, if you're playing say AAA demanding titles, expect lower. But esports, expect higher, as this is an average, what you should expect. So we're going to figure out which ones are the best and the worst within this sheet, but my suggestion to you to figure this out for yourself, which one makes the most sense for you, is take a look down the graph on the left hand side. If say you have a budget of $275, you'll be able to afford anything RX 6700 used or cheaper going up there. So then what you realistically want to do is have a look at the frame rate that you want to achieve at 1440p. 
So say like you want to target the 60 frames per second mark, most of these are going to give you that experience, except for the RTX 3050, which is slightly below, as well as the RX 6500 XT. So ignoring those and happy with all of the other frames per second results, we can see that on the new market, the RX 6650 XT, new at about $256 on average, gives us 92 frames per second at a value of $2.78 per frame, making it the best value card on this entire list for the new market. And for the worst value card on this list, we have the RTX 3050 at about $280 on average for the month of February, giving us 58 frames per second across our test suite at a value of $4.81, which is probably something like 80% worse value compared to the 6650 XT. But there are reasons to go for Nvidia. Say you have a professional workload application that requires you to buy an Nvidia GPU, you may kind of be forced into that. But in terms of Nvidia ray tracing, it is typically better, make no mistake. But unless you play an extremely lightweight ray trace title, I probably wouldn't put much weight on ray tracing at all. But how could we change this and maybe gain access to higher performing cards that may offer better value while maintaining our budget? What about the used market? Could we see another Nvidia GPU be a lot better value if you were willing to go used? And we absolutely can. In fact, both the RTX 3060 Ti and the RTX 3070 end up paying pretty good value, especially compared to the 3050 on the used market, that seems like not a very good value at all. And 116 frames per second, that is the highest result in this list for 1440p. So if you're looking used and you have a budget of about $260, RTX 3060 Ti may be a really good option if you are sold on Nvidia. 106 frames per second on average, the second highest in this result at $2.43 per frame. But if your team red or willing to migrate over, the RX 6650 XT on the used market is about 20% off compared to new, with an average of 92 frames per second at 1440p, giving us $2.17 in terms of value. Coming a close second is the 6600 non-XT, at $160 used. And it's kind of crazy that a lot of these GPUs that are in the budget category, a lot of them can do 1440p gaming quite well, which is really nice to see given that this is the lower end spectrum of all the cards that are currently being sold. But 1440p is not the most popular resolution. The most popular is 1080p. So let's take a look how that stacks up. But let's start introducing monitor frame rate because at 1080p, I feel like a lot of people have more like 120 hertz, 165 hertz refresh rate monitor. So we will try and tailor this data towards those experiences, being able to fulfill them at the desired resolution. So say you have a monitor that can do 120 hertz, you're realistically going to want to target your FPS to match that or better. So let's have a look at a couple of these options, see which ones can do that. The RX 6600 XT, new, can do that. RX 6650 XT, new, can also do that while also being cheaper, providing better value. The RTX 3060 Ti from Nvidia, a good Nvidia option, providing 144 frames per second at a value of $1.79, being the best value Nvidia option. Not bad at all, but it is a used GPU. So as we go over a couple of the best and the worst options, like I said before, have a look over this graph, figure out what your price range is, figure out what your performance target is, and then you can decide between which GPUs offer you the best value, whether they're new or used. So let's take a look at the worst value option, which is the RTX 3060 8 gigabyte. $3.41 per frame, giving us 97 frames per second on average across our test suite. So what from AMD ends up being the worst value option on the new market? Well, that is the RX 6500 XT, 65 frames per second on average at $2.31 per frame, which is also a really good reminder that a lot of the options at the lower end of any product stack, especially with graphics, even though they end up being cheaper, they end up providing worse value than something a couple tiers or even a tier above that. And the RX 6600 is a really good example of that. We're getting close to doubling the frames per second and the value has actually increased, although it is about $80 more expensive. But two tiers above that is where we get the best value option, the RX 6650 XT. 
regularly being sold for about $250, but on average, $256, providing on average 132 frames per second at a value of $1.94 which is pretty impressive. The RX 6650 XT has been the best value option pretty much across the stack. If it has the performance you need and you don't have a, say, workflow requirement for an NVIDIA GPU, I would highly recommend checking out that option. And I'm going to have links to all of the GPUs that I recommend in the video description and the comments section. But I will update the comments more frequently than the video description. But especially when we consider used, there's a lot of really good options in here that are priced really quite well, especially in terms of value. But I do understand that a lot of people get turned off of the used market. There are concerns with warranty and the card failing or arriving broken. So how do you mitigate that to the best of your ability? If you're considering buying used to save a bit of money, especially for the ultra low end cards, you could get a significantly better GPU with the same amount of money just by buying used. How do you make sure that you are best set up for success? Well, check out this video, the ultimate used market buyer's guide, where if you shop smart, could have you owning the card for up to 90 days and still be within the return window. In case there's any issues, for which you need to watch this video, how to test a used GPU, which is my entire process for making sure the card is performing the way that it should. And you can check those out by clicking here. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated, and I hope you have an amazing day.